Tonight, the developer behind Heartbleed speaks. Facebook wants to reduce like baiting. And Google Glass goes on sale for one day only. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 63 for Thursday, April 10th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by iFixit. Makes electronics repair easy with free repair guides, plus all the parts and tools you'll need. For $10 off your purchase of $50 or more, go to ifixit.com slash twit and enter the code TN2 at checkout. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Robin Segelmann, the German software developer who developed the security flaw Heartbleed that exposes personal data and encryption keys on millions of sites on the internet globally, says it wasn't intentional. Segelmann, who lives in Munster, Germany, said the bug which introduced the flaw was unfortunately missed by him and also a reviewer when he was introduced into the open source open SSL encryption protocol over two years ago. Segelmann says it's tempting but incorrect to assume that he did it maliciously, but that it was also very possible that intelligence agencies had been making use of it over the past two years. Now, as web users furiously change passwords and sign up for password generating software in the fallout, tech companies have been forced to respond one way or another via announcements or emails to users, and in some cases, forced logouts. Apple has finally weighed in today that its mobile and desktop and web services have not been affected by Heartbleed. Quote, Apple takes security very seriously. iOS and OS X never incorporated the vulnerable software and key web-based services were not affected, an Apple spokesperson told Recode. Facebook has announced plans to reduce stories on the news feeds of its users in three broad categories like baiting posts or when a post explicitly asks a reader to like or comment or share the post repeated content that both users and pages may reshare over and over and become less relevant over time and spammy links which is defined by facebook as stories that use quote inaccurate language or formatting to try and trick people into clicking through to a website that contains only ads or a combination of frequently circulated content and ads Nice way to say, liars. These changes are designed to boost user engagement overall. For example, in early testing, the company found a 5% increase in users clicking on links that take them away from Facebook after they knew they were going to see less spam. In other Facebook news, the Federal Trade Commission has cleared Facebook's proposed $19 billion acquisition of mobile messaging startup WhatsApp, though the deal is still subject to international regulatory approval before being considered fully closed. Facebook settled federal charges back in 2011 that it had deceived consumers by failing to keep its privacy promises and now must seek user approval on any changes to its privacy settings going forward. Google Play Music scored a mobile audio win today with an announcement that it's adding native support for Sono, so Android users can now stream songs to their Sono speaker systems more easily and bypass the Sonos controller app altogether. Google Play Music is the first major service to offer this level of Sonos integration. An Android device will still need to be on the same Wi-Fi network as the Sonos hardware. And Google notes that you'll actually still need that controller app installed, even if you won't be using it. For users who prefer to use the Sonos controller app, Google Play Music will now show up as a supported service there. Aereo has announced that its live TV and DVR streaming service will be available for Chromecast starting on May 29th. If it isn't shut down before then, that is. The startup is currently in a battle with broadcasters at the U.S. Supreme Court over its TV streaming service. The court, which is slated to hear arguments in the case starting April 22nd, is expected to rule in the case by the end of June. Aereo backer Barry Diller told Bloomberg last week that if we lose... We're finished. In the meantime, Aereo is available to consumers in 11 U.S. markets, and the company has said it plans to launch in additional cities throughout 2014. Coming up, ever dreamed of riding on one of those Tron light cycles? Oculus Rift is making that dream come true. And up next is Venture Beats' Harrison Weber with information on a big Google Glass special sale. But first... This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by iFixit, makers of the ProTech Toolkit. The ProTech Toolkit contains 70 tools to help you with almost any repair 
on any project. It includes iFixit's 54-bit driver kit with standard specialty and security bits. It also includes precision tweezers, an anti-static wrist strap, opening tools to get inside a phone, a notebook, a tablet, or a game console. Lightweight, compact, and durable, it is the gold standard for electronics work. Garage hackers use it, the CIA uses it, even the FBI. But more importantly, these unique tools are used by technicians everywhere who repair things. Backed by a one-year warranty, the ProTech Toolkit is only $69.95. With iFixit, you can fix it yourself. Visit iFixit.com slash twit for a free step-by-step -step repair guide and all the parts and tools you'll need. Enter the code TN2 at any checkout to save 10 at checkout to save $10 off of any purchase of $50 or more. That's iFixit.com slash twit. All right, let's let's uh, introduce Harrison Weber, now the news editor over at VentureBeat. Hi, Harrison. Hey, how's it going? Very well, thank you. All right, let's talk about this whole Google Glass sale. What is Google doing? It's, it's going to, to open up sales for just one day. To whom exactly? Just one day. So essentially, Google has uh, kept sales of Glass very, very closed to just a privileged group of explorers, people who had uh, applied to be included in early pilot tests. And for one day, it was just revealed today that... Uh, Google's going to open it all up uh, just for a day to everyone in the U.S. So as long as you're based in the U.S., you have a chance of getting them. Now, this is not uh, some sort of a discount, right? It's still going to be the same price yep. that, that Glass Explorers have, have already paid. Still $1,500. Uh, definitely a steep price for a lot of people. That's probably the only factor that's going to give people actually interested a chance of getting one because there's likely going to be a lot of demand for them. So up until now, it's been a bit of a novelty to see somebody out and about wearing a pair of Google Glass. What do you think Google's motivation for opening this up to everyone, at least if they can afford it, is? So Google's trying to define Glass as both a consumer and a business product. And it seems, you know, even though it's still early stages, that it serves more as a business product. Uh, it serves users better as a business product than as a consumer product. And so I think what Google's trying to do is see how interested people really are uh, with Glass and how they'll use it in the future. So, so far, I think 10,000 units have been sold. And it's unclear how much they're going to sell. But I think Google's definitely going to learn a lot from this. What, what's your take on how many Google will sell? Obviously, there, there, there are disappointed people who are still trying to get into the Explorer program. But for somebody who's of, you know, average interest, do you think this is going to be a big day for Google Glass sales? I wouldn't be surprised if they doubled it. The only thing is, how long you know is it going to take for uh, the uh, customers to actually get Glass when they buy it? Uh, you, typically, there's been a long waiting period for that. Uh, so it's unclear, you know, how long people will have to wait, but I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they really expanded it, and it probably would only take a few hours for that to happen. All right, let's move on to a little a other piece of news, this one involving Twitter. Twitter has launched notifications on the web for replies and favorites and tweets. Now, many people think of notifications as something you get on your mobile device, so how does this work on the web? So it kind of feels like uh, Mac OS X, you know, desktop notifications where you can act on the notification and reply to a tweet if you get a tweet and you have all that set up. It's just a little notification on the bottom right of the screen. And essentially, Twitter is just trying to add this interactivity to its site. Uh, it's unclear if that will you know, be reflected in its app, although uh, most you know, smartphones all have built-in notifications. So I think they're just trying to create that feeling of real-time real timeness on the web. It, 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 I can't help but think this just looks that much more like how a Facebook chat might live on top of my Facebook page. Although we now know that Facebook wants to do away with that unless you're using Facebook Messenger anyway, unless you're using the, the web version. Is, is this just the next step in Twitter and Facebook starting to look a lot more like each other? It certainly is. It certainly is. Just, just a day ago, Twitter announced the complete redesign of its profiles. So that's going to roll out over the next few weeks, just like this messaging feature. And honestly, I mean, it's, it's hard not to say that it looks just like Facebook. Um, the, you know, the, the cover photos, uh, the, the way that profile photos overlay. It's clear that Twitter's goals over time are aligning more with Facebook, uh, especially in the advertising space.
So what's your take on the idea of what essentially looks like a pop-up over the top of a Twitter profile, uh, profile page or stream? If you're using it, do you find that annoying or do you think it's going to be effective for engagement? Because obviously that's what Twitter is looking for. I genuinely think it'll be effective for engagement. I mean, I think it's the power users who will probably be annoyed and they'll, they're able to actually turn notifications off. I'd be far more concerned about the profile changes, which are really going to change the way people look at Twitter going forward. Well, Harrison Weber, uh, news editor over at VentureBeat, thanks so much for joining us and talking through a couple of these news stories. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Tell uh, folks before you go where they can find more of your work online. Yes. So you can find me on Twitter. It's uh, at Harrison Weber. And you can find me on VentureBeat.com. Excellent. Come back soon. Awesome. Thank you. All right, moving on. Finally, finally, anybody here a Tron fan? I think probably most of you are. Even Burke back there, he's running the teleprompter, raised his hand. And I think you're going to like this Oculus Rift-powered light cycle sim. It's an arcade prototype that combines the Oculus Rift with a light cycle simulator. It's called the Rift Cycles Project, and the game was developed using Unity by the Portuguese startup Overflow Interactive. It's a game based on the light cycle battle from the Tron universe, the real one. Well, as real as it is anyway, and fully compatible with the Oculus Rift. Still in its early stages, but pretty cool. Lots of photos of how the whole thing came together over at thearcademan.net. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us with questions, comments, and feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. See you tomorrow. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.